Okay, well, welcome to ICSI Economics Unit 4.6, Economic Growth. Uh, well, let's have a look. We've got um, some subtopics. We've got 4.6.1, a definition of economic growth. 4.6.2, measurement of economic growth. We will be using the measurements of real gross domestic product and how it can be used to measure economic growth. And we will also look at the concept of a GDP per capita. 4.6.3, causes and consequences of a recession. Um, what is a recession? How the recession moves the economy within its PPC. Uh, consequences are things like unemployment. Um, yes, 4.6.4, uh, causes of economic growth. How changes in total demand may increase the utilization of resources and GDP, resulting in movement from the inside towards the PPC. How economic growth shifts the economy's PPC to the right and is caused by changes in investment technology and the quantity and quality of factors of production. Sounds exciting. And 4.6.5, consequences of economic growth, the costs and benefits of economic growth in the context of different economies. Ah, economic growth um, could lead to inflation. Economic growth, though, in some economies could lead to better standards of living. 4.6.6, policies to promote economic growth, the range of policies available to promote economic growth and how effective they may be. Well, let's look globally and locally. Gross domestic product. Uh, Belarus. In Belarus, the GDP is up by 1.3% in January. This is January 2021. The Belarusian gross domestic product GDP amounted to 12.2%. 2 billion rubles. This is 4.7 billion US dollars in January 2021, a 1.3% increase year on year, the country's National Statistical Committee has said. Mm, interesting news here. Ah, something for our Spanish learners there. El País, uh, the Spanish newspaper in English. Um, GDP per capita. Did you know that the Czech Republic overtakes Spain in GDP per capita? Nearly 20 years after the after Spaniards adopted the euro, there has been no convergence with Germany, while Eastern European economies are edging closer. Hmm, interesting. So that means if we take all of the GDP of Spain, and divided by all the Spanish, and we take all of the GDP of the Czech Republic, and we divide it by all the Czechs, the Czech is richer in GDP per capita than the Spaniard. This article says it all. Recession. France 24. The COVID-19 pandemic pushes French economy into deep recession. Not so good for our friends in France. Yes. Recession. I wonder what that means. Recession. GDP, the expenditure method. Well, you will recognize that AD equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M. The C is for consumption, the I is for investment, the G is for government spending, the X is for exports, and the M is for imports. Well, good news is that uh, the formula for AD is also the expenditure method for calculating GDP. So GDP equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M. GDP is C plus I plus G plus X minus M. 
C is for consumption, I is for investment, G is for government spending, X is for export, and M is for import. G! What is real GDP? Well, quite simply, real GDP is nominal GDP adjusted for inflation. Why? Well, let me put my thinking cap on. Well, in the circular flow of income model, the flow of income is equal to the flow of output which is equal to the flow of expenditure. It's the same flow that's measured in different ways. Imagine an economy that makes one cheese. The cheese is worth 10 euros. Now, if the next year the prices go up and the cheese is now worth 15 euros, has the economy grown? Time to put on the thinking cap. Well, no, because the output was one cheese. And the next year the output is oh, one cheese. So there is no growth. The real GDP is one cheese. This example works for other goods and services uh, uh, and, and is not only about cheese. There are one, two, three, three methods of measuring GDP. We know the expenditure method. GDP equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M. There is also the income method. Is the total income earned within the economy? Excluding, of course, transfer payments. The output method is adding the value of all output produced in an economy, um, but we have to avoid double counting. Um, so there's a talk of gross value added. Uh, for example, when I when I chop down the tree, I make the tree into planks. I make the planks into uh, a bench. I make the bench into uh, well, I make the bench into a bench. Now, when I, I I measure the bench, the bench has got the component of wood. So the first time I chop down the wood is worth a certain value. Then by turning the wood into planks, I have added value. By turning the planks into the bench, I have added value. Now, if you are puzzled about this, refer to your circular flow of income model. We did this earlier. Um, basically, the households are selling their factors of production. Um, they are getting in return from the firm's income. They are spending this income on, on, on buying goods and services and um, so on. Um, now, all three methods in theory should give the same nominal GDP figure. In real life, you may get different figures depending on how you're collecting the information. But with IGCSE, we are looking for the most theoretically correct answer. So if you have a multiple choice, choose the answer that is correct in theory. GDP per capita. There are so many of um, English people. So if I take the, the GDP of England and I divide it by the number of English people, I will get a figure of GDP per capita. If I go to Italy, there are many of Italian people. If 
I take the GDP of Italy and divide it by the number of Italians, I will get the GDP per capita. It is time to research. I don't know if this hat is Canadian or Russian. Let it be Russian. It feels like a Russian hat. Um, if I take the GDP of uh, Russia, it could be bigger than the GDP of Italy. Hmm. Something to research there. Is this true or untrue? Well, uh, there are many more Russians than Italians. So if I take the GDP of Russia and divide it by all of the Russians, I will get the GDP per capita. OK, GDP growth. I take the current GDP and I minus that of the last GDP. Um, Usually we do this annually, so if I take the GDP of 2020 minus the GDP of 2019, I will end up with the economic growth for the year 2020. Um, it can also be calculated quarterly, semi-annually, or even monthly, but monthly figures can be less accurate for a number of reasons. Um, reason number one, I might be not be able to collect all of the information. Um, for example, expenditure method, I will be looking at what people are spending in shops, um, but it takes time to get all of these figures to my statisticians. Um, GDP can also be negative, as in, I take the GDP of 2020, I take away the GDP of 2019, but I get a minus figure. What is a recession? Well, I went to Investopedia. Um, you'll get lots of definitions for a recession. A recession is a macroeconomic term that refers to a significant decline in general economic activity in a designated region. It, ha it had been typically recognized as two consecutive quarters of economic decline, as reflected by GDP in conjunction with monthly indicators such as a rise of unemployment unemployment figures. Um, also, we can see when we've got negative economic growth, we are in recession. Um, have a look what the textbook says. Yeah, a recession. Sometimes we get a technical recession where we've got negative growth, but the economy recovers. Um, normally, recession is a cycle. So later we will look at the business cycle. And when you are doing the labeling of the business cycle, notice where the recession occurs in the business cycle. Ah, that looks like a PPC. I remember PPCs from the beginning of economics. Uh, and basically, we've got one here labeled uh, capital goods against consumer goods. Um, if you look at this particular one, in terms of PPC1, I know the P looks a little bit like an I, but it's there, PPC1. Um, we have a movement from A to B. Um, this implies that there is economic growth. The economy um, was um, operating with A, giving X amount of capital goods and, and Y amount of consumer goods or Y amount of consumer goods and X amount of capital goods, whichever way you want it. And um, the economy could become some, uh, the people, they, they invest more, they invest more, they become a little bit more efficient, and we get closer to the line of PPC1, which is the line of efficiency. So we have economic growth. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. But which eye? Is the left eye stronger than the right? Or the right eye stronger than the left? I don't know. All right, so what factors can shift the PPC to the right? Well, it can be changes in investment. Um, 
investments in infrastructure, the opening of a new port, the building of new airports, uh, can make my land more efficient and my PPC shifts outwards. It could be changes in technology. I find new technological methods. I could utilize artificial intelligence. I could utilize robotics. And I could make my economy more efficient. And the PVC would shift outwards. Um, I, it could be finding more quantity of factors of production. We could discover some oil reserves, gold reserves, and our economy will have the potential to grow. It could be the quality of these factors of production. I could train my labor to be more productive and the economy should grow. It's a nice article. I will get my binoculars out and read it. Ah, the reclamation of the Rand mine dumps has opened up old sores and air and water pollution has again become problematic, especially to those who live close by. Dust fallout is a major concern as it reduces the quality of air that the locals breathe, leading to bronchial complaints. <coughs> this, along with acid mine drainage, is a grave matter that must be addressed for the benefit of future generations, as a toxic environment will be detrimental to Johannesburg's standing as the premier city in sub-Saharan Africa. Well, somebody discovered um, that all the mine dust and... and that they were throwing away because uh, when they they mined the there's a little bit of history when they had the gold mines in Johannesburg they would bring up the rock and within that rock was a certain amount of gold so they would crush the rock and they would mix it sometimes with things like uranium uh, not uranium and uh, what's the other one oh, 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 oh what is it well, it's not uranium uranium is found in gold um, I will look it up, but they mixed it with some yellow stuff. I will find out, don't worry, I will find out what the yellow stuff is. It's a poisonous yellow stuff. Anyways, um, but somebody realized that with the modern technology, um, they could discover gold from the dust that people had thrown away uh, maybe 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 years ago. So they took this new technology and they basically washed away the mind dump. Here is a famous mind dump that used to have a drive-in cinema on top. Yeah, but this is a big mountain of gold waste, which we could get gold from. If you really want to research it, you will find the new new mind dumps look very much white. They have they have taken a lot of the gold out. Very interesting. I'm going to look up the yellow cyanide. Cyanide. Cyanide is in, used in the process of extracting gold. Hmm, that looks like something I should check up. Why don't you check up for me? Um, but really, the groundwater becomes poisonous when they're doing this. And yes, I enough said about the... Isn't it amazing that they could, could remove gold dumps? I used to navigate by, by mine dumps and then, then they just disappeared. Look at this sketch. It's the same one I did before. This diagram literally took me about 30 seconds to draw. Now, with a, with a diagram being worth some four marks in certain of questions, is it correctly labeled? Capital goods, consumer goods, one mark. Am I showing a shift outward from PPC1 to PPC2? Yes. Am I demonstrating economic growth? Well, A to B to C, yes. Ah. So, economic growth, um, as we've seen uh, in the previous slide, when we discover uh, more of gold, for example, or we discover new technologies, our PPC can shift outwards, thus allowing us um, to produce a quantity of C, um, which is greater than the B and the A previously. Hmm. These diagrams are good. I like them. Well, I'm tired now. Time to eat some nice chips and uh, some kind of meat. Hmm. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it gone? Yep. That, uh, that needs eating while it's warm. 
so so I'm going to give some work to you guys. Um, I want you to make some notes on the business cycle. I want you to draw a business cycle. Um, you must label your y-axis real GDP, and you must label your x-axis time. Um, you all have a bit of them. A business cycle, I almost said bicycle, I mean a business cycle, and, and there will be a long-term trend, hopefully going upwards, and the, the, the business cycle will go up until we get a boom, and then go down in a recession, get to a slump, come to a recovery, um, but that's a job for you guys to do, yeah? I would like some proof. There's many sources. We, we can investigate. We can research. I would use the textbook. There's a nice business cycle on textbook. Please use the, theore the, the, the theory one. Um, real life examples, there's also one in the textbook, are much more jagged. Yeah? Um, but you'll know that. So good. Draw me a business cycle diagram, please. Have you done it yet? Consequences of economic growth. Well, um, I made a little table. Um, positive sides, greater av availability of goods and services, increased employment opportunities and incomes, increased sales, uh, would be more profit, uh, more tax revenue for the government, increased standard of living. We could add a couple more things. Um, negative though, as the economy grows, uh, we might find that we've got the money to invest in capital and machinery and our, our laborers, our workers get replaced and this could lead to higher unemployment, especially in what's known as the developing the growth of nations. Um, for example, the BRICS nations, uh, B being Brazil, R being uh, Russia, I being India, uh, C being China, and S being South Africa or South Korea. Um, growth mainly in terms of capital goods at the expense of consumer goods. Resources may be used up. That is may be used up. Where did my A go? Who stole my A? Maybe I used it for the last diagram. Hmm. Oh, and then we can get pollution and environmental damage. Um, it's not nice. Go oh, brainstorm. I like a brainstorm. Um, well, let's have a look. Costs and benefits of economic growth. Well, countries like the BRICS nation of China has grown, uh, their people have become more wealthier, they can live at higher higher levels and at higher standards of living, they can travel more, um, they can afford to go to university. Um, in fact, I was reading an article that the Chinese um, companies are, are starting to invest heavily in universities in the UK. Interesting. Um, so, so some benefits, there's lots of benefits of economic growth, but let's think of examples. Um, for example, when we get economic growth, it may not be shared. Especially in oil producing countries, um, the wealth is accumulated in the hands of few. Also, um, the economic growth um, may be a result of multinationals, foreign investment, and the actual profits of the economic growth get taken out of that country. Um, thing, brainstorm. Um, pollution's a big one. I, I talked of the Chinese people getting wealthier and they're getting a great standard of living, um, but I've seen some horrific pictures of pollution. Having to wear masks. Okay, we, we all have to wear masks now with the COVID, um, but we're kind of wear, wearing them for a different reason than pollution. I saw, oh, I think it was the Philippines or Indonesia, and um, there was lots of plastic refuse uh, because the, the, the firms were recycling them, but they were burning plastic that was made by Canadians and, and British, I think the article did say. And, and the poor people in Indonesia who had the beautiful beaches um, suffered the horrible smoke. All right, well, you guys brainstorm, um, get some ideas. Yeah.
costs and benefits of economic growth. I'm, I'm finishing off here. Um, policies to promote economic growth. Well, we learned of demand side policies. These were our, our, our monetary policies and fiscal policies. Yeah. If I lower the tax rate, then there would be more investment in the economy. So I'm looking at expansionary monetary policy um, or, for example, uh, expansionary fiscal policy. I reduce the tax rate. Um, I spend more government spending and I should get economic growth. Um, supply side policies, there's a number of them. Um, in fact, I will read some from a textbook. It's a, it's a nice textbook. This textbook's name is Complete Economics, third edition, and it, it's, yes, it's, it's a nicer one. Um, they do say um, we can improve education and training, we can do research and development, we can build new in economic infrastructure. In Germany, they repair the roads. We can give tax cuts and subsidies. We can encourage multinationals to give some foreign direct investment. Um, however, when it comes to the effectiveness of these policies, supply side policies take a long time. Is a time like, um, for example, I, I might decide to, to invest in my universities. Um, it will take, oh, wow, for years, three to four years, um, for the more students to get through the university. And uh, it's a long time to wait. And if my economy is not strong enough, um, some, of, some of these um, graduates will go abroad and work in a land that pays them more money. Yeah, um, demand side policies, these are normally, um, especially the fiscal policies, um, would result in a deficit. Yeah, or we would need to raise taxes. And we would know that some of these things might be inflationary. So we need to consider. Um, well, this, for me, I would take a read of the textbook, yes? Um, and I might find this an opportune time to go and recap on demand-side policies and supply-side policies. I will say goodbye. I did say goodbye, didn't I? Then I must switch off the camera.